Hello, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have come with another information, and that's a bitter one indeed, that we have lost another icon to the cold hands of death in the person of Adamaze Onyeka Owen, our mother, our sister, a brave heroine. She was part of the war. She has some history to tell us. You know, we have some records of all she said. But I want you to follow um, follow up. Hear her for the last time. Oh, my goodness. Adamaze, we lost you. Our heart bleeds. But God understands better than we do. Let's hear her. And then our brother will tell you more of our history. Thank you, Ndibo. Chuku Gozio Nunine. Apologies about that. We were a people in war, led into war, not by our own wishes or design, but in self-defense. No apologies, Nigeria. No apologies to the world. But here we are. I'm sorry, I'm going to stand up. My name is Onye Komwenu, and it's not the Onye Komwenu that you think you know, that you read about in the papers, but the Onye Komwenu that was born and raised in Port Harcourt. That's correct. And the person who made that statement knows when he says DK Omenu, he's telling you where this person came from. My father was the first Arundizog man in the federal house and he was representing a Potakot constituency. He was the principal of Enitonia High School. He was a brilliant man, but he died too early. Thank you. That's my background. I'm also from Abia State. Since I am Adamazi, I'm a Mwaro. So I'm Adamazi. A virtuous woman. We have lost an icon. We have lost one of the mothers of Biafra. Just last year, during the advent of the election in Nigeria, she made a speech. She made a video. And afterwards, when I analyzed that video, I called her the mother of Biafra. But unfortunately, some of the ignorant ones, some of the naysayers, they got angry with me, saying, why should I call her or nickname her the mother of Biafra? Today, I have chosen to respond to those critics and naysayers. At a time of mourning this amazing woman, a woman who gave her all to Nigeria, a woman who was also helping the sick, helping the dying, helping those who were starved as a young girl during the Biafran War. She still gave her all to Nigeria. But at her later days, her later years, she turned around. She saw Nigeria for what Nigeria is. And she expressed herself in the podium of Yasina speak. She said things the way it is. And she called out on the Biafrans not to be scared, to keep their head up. So if I did call her the mother of Biafra, then I am still calling her one of the mothers of Biafra today. As we mourn her loss, as we grieve with her family, at a solemn time like this, I want us to listen to the speech given by, by this illustrious woman, 
Mara Moyeka Oweno. And tell me what you got out of it. And I hope after this speech that she made some few years ago in the year 2020 to be more precise, I hope after listening to the speech, you will start identifying her as one of the mothers of Biafra. May, may her soul rest in power. We don't say rest in peace. We say rest in power. Because we don't die, we multiply. You cannot destroy energy. There is no point of origin, nor end of an energy. But without any much further ado, at a sad time like this, I want us to please listen to the speech given by our sister, our mother, Ada Oyeka Oweno. Thank you. Listen. It's a great privilege to be here with you today to talk about a subject matter that is very close to our hearts, that very personal to many of us, very sensitive matter, very painful matter indeed. And yes, some of us have lived with some bitterness and we make no apologies about that. We were a people in war, led into war, not by our own wishes or design, but in self-defense. No apologies, Nigeria. No apologies to the world. But here we are. I'm sorry, I'm going to stand up, if you don't mind. Um, my name is Onye Kongwenu, and it's not the Onye Kongwenu that you think you know, that you read about in the papers, but the Onye Kongwenu that was born and raised in Port Harcourt. That's correct. And the person who made that statement knows when he says DK when he's telling you where this person came from. My father was the first Arondizog man in the federal house and he was representing a Port Harcourt constituency. He was the principal of Enitonia High School. He was a brilliant man, but he died too early. Thank you. That's my background. I'm also from Abia State. Since I am Adamazi, I'm Umwaro. Tonum Adamazi. I'm from Imo State, Arondizoga, and I'm from Anambra, where my mother comes from. I can go there and live. I can do anything I want in Anambra. Nobody can say anything to me. I'm also from Lagos State. Ah, surprise, surprise. Yeah, I'm from Lagos State. I married a Yoruba man. I have two Yoruba children. They only paid 5,000 Naira as bride price. So we have a right to demand more money anytime. <laughs> Five minutes going. Yes, 50 years after that, I fought the war. As a young girl, 14, 15, 16, 17, I was in that war. And I lost many relatives. I worked in hospitals. I carried babies who died in my arms. I treated old people who took days to die. People were dying out of hunger. Even our soldiers were dying out of hunger at a particular point. But thank God we survived. You see, when my father died at 40, he was a politician and also a principal, but he didn't have much money. In those days, you had to keep your day job, even if you were a member of the House of Representatives. Yes, my mother, an Anambra woman, was a trader. Put your hands together for Anambra women. She was richer than my dad, so my dad would borrow money from her to buy the land, and, and he never paid back. You know how it is. And my mother dared not raise the subject again. At the end of the war, I could not go back to Patakot. My home was abandoned property. Those of you who come from Patakot know the story. A home that a widow, my father had just laid the foundation when he died in a motor car accident, on duty. 
a building that a widow and living just adjacent to us, the Ikopus on Hospital Road, we could see you, we could relate. In fact, I thought we were related because every family in Port Harcourt was together. You didn't care where they came from or who they were. Once you're from Port Harcourt, every parent had the right to reprimand another child that you saw misbehaving. It was a beautiful town, but we couldn't get back to it. So for me, the civil war never ended. At the end of that war, my father, oh no, it never ended. It's still going on. I had no family house. My poor mother went back to claim the property. She was beating into a coma by people whom she had helped all her life and sent to school because she's an evil woman and now Potakot belonged to another group of people. They forgot the sacrifices that the evils made. It's still going on. No apology has ever been made about that. The road that is now referred to Harold Wilson Drive used to be DK Owenu Road. Because of the sacrifice that people like the Owenos, the Ikokus, the what you know them, the sacrifices they made in, in building up what I got. Here I am. So I traveled outside, thanks to my sister who was at Harvard at the time, who organized for the rest of us to come and go to school. But we all came back to do what? To develop Nigeria. I have tried with the little talent that God has given me to use it for the betterment of my society and my country. But can I tell you something? That if I were a Yoruba or Hausa woman, I would probably have had more patronage, I would have had more help and more support than I have got by my self-help effort to raise this country up. But I'm not asking anybody for anything. I put myself through school my widowed mother did her best, but I was working two jobs in America to put myself through school. I didn't want to take Nigerian scholarship because they were giving it to everybody, those who deserved it and those who didn't. And many of them were not even in school. I put myself through school. Wellesley College and the New School for Social Research. I have no apologies to make to anybody. I am angry. I am angry at Nigeria. I'm angry at this government which seems to be letting us down. I am angry at us as a people. I am angry at my people in Dibo. Because only a Juada Jomwe. If they have refused you, why are you refusing yourself? Brother. Stop complaining and do it for yourself. We've always been able to do that. How did we build Imo Airport? Nobody built it. We spent how many years raising money? I know it was my equipment that was traveling all over the country for concerts. I gave free concerts to build Imo Airport. That's mm. who we have been. And I remember in those day, days, Epurana, Imo State Union, Purana, ZCOB, DK Wanofa, Oputa, Ikoku, you name them, Alba Corana, that's it. No dispute. Everybody follows the line and gets done what needs to be done. Let me tell you about Ndibo. Ndibo are wonderful people. Yes. Let me tell you about Ndibo. Ndibo are resilient. Let me tell you about Ndibo. Ndibo are people with integrity, with conscience, with a feeling of humanity that they can reach out wherever they are and contribute something to that society and not care that they're not even from there. That's who we are. Do not categorize us as people who are uncles. We don't know, we don't have unity amongst ourselves. You're kidding yourself. We love ourselves. But we also love our neighbors. You see, to love your neighbor, you have got to love yourself. That's what the good book says. Love your neighbor as yourself. So how are you going to love your neighbor if you don't know anything about self-love? I am a proud Igbo woman. I know yes. If there's anything you know about me as I walk into a place, know that. That there's nothing you can do to me in this country to bow my head. I will not do it. I am my father's daughter. I am my mother's daughter. As an evil person, I stand before you committed to the project called Nigeria. But at the same time, you talk about never again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh. Tell them. Tell them. What is happening now? Never again? Never again. Know. 
but I will soon take my seat. Let me say to the rest of Nigeria, you insult us, and sometimes we do the insulting as well, and that's terrible. We've come to a stage where we have to be insulting each other so badly. Listen. But go ahead. We will not succumb. We will not bow. We are children of God. We are here for a purpose. God has put us on this good earth for that purpose. You cannot drive us to the sea. You cannot tell us to shut up and take the pain that you are inflicting on us. Abuse us on top of it. Listen, if you don't want us, then let us go. Thank you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, God. Oh, my God, have mercy. May our soul rest in peace, my people. You have heard from an amazing woman, a treasure to be behold. I called her a diamond in the midst of gold. You've heard from her that we are a people that should be proud of ourselves. We should not bow down. We should not cower. We are not known to be cowards. Yes, we know that the enemy, they have come to us. Yes, we know the enemies, they have colluded. They blame us for everything. When the rain falls, they blame the Igbo man. They are doing their politics. They blame the Igbo man. Now the Nigerians are going out for their protest. And now they are still blaming the Igbo man. When some military men, some young boys, I call them boys, some young soldiers in 1966, when they choose to take destiny in their hands to liberate their country, Young soldiers from across the whole country known as Nigeria. They came together under one voice, under one accord, and they said enough is enough. It is time to create a new Nigeria. They carried out a coup and took those in office out of office. But suddenly, the same people, they colluded. They came with their spin doctors. They changed the narrative. All they had to do was plant the seed of discord. And they claimed the coup was an evil coup. And they gave their reasons. They said because all the soldiers involved in that coup, they took the life of their so-called elder statesmen, while those in the Igbo side, they refused to do it. And for that reason, it was nicknamed an Igbo coup. I call it a classic example of giving a dog a bad name just to hang it. And since 1966 and counting, 58 years and counting, the Igbos are met again with the same situation the same dilemma, the same trauma from the same people who claim they believe in one Nigeria. Today, I want to speak on this amazing woman called Onye Kawenu, a woman who as a child, we grew up listening to her music. In every music she made, she put a message in her music. She wasn't a type speaking vulgar. She was teaching the people, educating the nation with her music, and today she is gone. I pray her soul rest in power. From where I'm from, we don't say rest in peace. You rest in power. As you move to the next dimension, Madam Oyeka Owenu, I pray to God that your soul will be well. You have done your part on earth. We the beer friends, we thank you, we appreciate you. You did what you had to do while you were moving around, doing your thing in Nigeria. You were even married to a Yoruba man to show that we can, we came, we, we believe their so-called one Nigeria ideology. We were open hands to it. But till this day, Onyeka, 
you see what the other tribes they are doing to your people and i am glad in this video you said you were angry you are angry and also you made it to know that we the beer friends we are not cowards we are men of honor we men of virtue we know what is right and we shall keep on doing what is right today my people i declare madame Onyeka as a mother of biafra a woman that should be emulated throughout her life and career she always carried herself you will always see her at the pedigree at the pinnacle of whatever she does she did well she lived a very good life and for that reason i want us to please keep her in our memory pray for her that as she embarks on this journey into the unknown may the good god of biafra guide her but i have a promise for Madame Moyeka. All I wish, I wish, I wish you were here with us until December the 2nd, 2024. But I believe maybe sometimes the gods, they know best. You have done your part. You have run your race. But it is now for us, the people. We, the children of Biafra. We, the new men and women of Biafra, the new breed. They call us the Gen Z, but I say no, we are the new breed. We are the ones destined by God to bring Biafra, because it is clear. Nigeria has been unfair to us. Nigeria has been unfair to us. They have shown that they hate us, they despise us, and they still want to hold us in bondage we are not the people that are ready to live as slaves in a place in a contraption created by the white man and at the end they want us to say we believe in nigeria a contraption a project created by their slave masters lord have mercy i can't believe this Madame Onyeka, I want to assure you that come what may from the 2nd of December, Biafra will be here, Biafra will come, and God willing, when we have our nation, I hope our Prime Minister will be able to give you a heroic befitting burial where you'll be clothed with the flag of Biafra. Because from the speech you made today, it is clear that you know where you came from. You know about your story. You know about your family. You know what they did to your people, even those you called your neighbors. Lord have mercy. Is safe. God will have mercy on Ndebo. It's not today that we started suffering. We have suffered age long. Both children, adults, women, pregnant ones, especially the aged ones. No respect to any of us. We are being crushed. If not that Chukwu Kikabiyama is with us, there wouldn't have been remains of Ndebo. But see us today thriving thriving soaring like eagles because there is god in us yes you have to carry yourself carry yourself lift your head up there is god in you as an evil person and that's why you prosper that's why you you pass through a lot of things and you survive Chukwo kike chekwa ndibo. Chukwo kike biko bunie ibueno manye hameri. Give us freedom. We need freedom. Because we cannot be under those that we are better off than.
it is not done. It's a taboo. We want to be free because we, we are created free beings. Made whole by Chukwuki Kabiyama. So no human has that right to keep us down, to suppress us or to pocket us. No. No. It's not supposed to be. And I pray that God will see us through. Amen. He say. He say. He say.